I'm going to hell. What is going on, you guys? It's Extreme here, and welcome back to another episode of my Road to Max Prestige, a series I do Monday through Thursday, where new episodes will go live sometime after 9 a.m. Pacific time, by the way. Now, in today's episode, I want to share with you guys a specific story. And I kind of wanted to do a story today because the last couple days I've talked about a bunch of other stuff. I didn't really have, you know, I, Monday I did one video, Tuesday I did a story, Wednesday was kind of one of those cockwobble episodes. So today I wanted to do a flat out story for you guys. And so the reason I want to share this particular story is, uh, well, I was reminded about it recently, and it, it kind of it kind of makes me sad when I think about what happened. So, first things first, as of this very moment in time, no one in my family, none of my friends, nobody I know knows this story because I never shared it with anybody. The circumstances behind this situation were kept very private by both myself and the supposed mother. Now, I say supposed, but then no, she really was going to be the mother of my child. I'm going to go ahead and jump quite far ahead and just tell you guys right now, if you couldn't already tell, I'm not a dad. So, if you do the math, there's no baby. I think I'll leave it at that for now, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. So, I don't really want to... How do I put this? I, I, first things first, I want to say that none of the women I've mentioned so far in this series, or la this season or last season, none of the women I've mentioned were the mother of my child. Were going to be the mother of my child. It wasn't my ex. It wasn't anybody. This happened when I was 21 years old. I had a really crappy job. Um, life was really not that great all around. And I met this young woman. She was 18. We both clicked on a lot of levels. We were completely like, in many ways, we were perfect matches for each other. And we both were on the same mentality of wanting children and all that stuff. And so one night, she hits me up and says, hey, how do you feel about, you know, making a baby? And I thought about it for all of about 30 seconds. Are you serious? Yes, let's do it. Seriously, that's exactly how it went down. And so we did the thing. Now, on that particular night, she didn't get pregnant, obviously. Because we wound up trying for about three months. And then, lo and behold, one day she's sitting there and she's like, Hmm, I don't feel so good. I wonder what's going on. I've been having a lot of unprotected sex recently. And uh, he hasn't been using contraceptives of any kind. And I'm not on birth control. Oh, hey, I might be pregnant. So she goes, gets a pregnancy test, finds out she's pregnant. And she couldn't believe it. She, this was happening. This was actually going to happen. Now, we had both agreed that we were not going to be more than just, you know, parents. We were going to have fun with each other, obviously. But we drew the line on we weren't going to try and date each other. We, we That's not how this child was conceived. We're not going to try and force it. If it developed, that was one thing. But at the time, neither one of us were feeling that. So, over the next few months... She would go to her doctor appointments and everything, and she did a lot of it by herself. And it wasn't that she didn't want me to go with her, but at the same time, it goes back to that whole, we weren't trying to be in a couple, a relationship together, we weren't trying, we weren't a couple, we were just friends that fooled around and, you know, had a like-minded ideal of wanting kids. So, in her eyes, while she wanted me to go to these appointments, the other problem we had was getting me there. Now, she didn't want anyone to know who the father was, and I didn't really want to tell anybody I was going to be a dad. You know, I, I was, I definitely didn't want to tell my family, especially my mom, man. She would have freaked out over the circumstances. 
Um, so it was a very interesting and unique situation. And one day I get a phone call. Now, I thought that, because the thing was, and I want to give you guys a quick little backstory. She was supposed to come over, pick me up, and we were going to go back to her house. I was going to stay the night, and we were going to have a wild night of, you know, you get the idea. She's calling me an hour after she was supposed to, and she starts crying, and I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, Eddie, I've, I was in a car accident this morning. I'm at the hospital. I lost the baby. My immediate genuine reaction, are you okay? You heard me, right? I lost the baby. I said, I don't care about the baby. Are you okay? You lost the baby. That sucks really bad. It's not, I wasn't happy about it, but it wasn't her fault. It really wasn't. And it wouldn't be fair to me, of, it wouldn't have been fair of me, sorry, to blame her for it. It really wasn't her fault. And what I mean by that is, she got hit by a guy who was too busy fixing his fucking cup of coffee. I'm not joking. The guy that hit the mother of my child, the unborn mother of my child, Sorry, the mother of my unborn child. I'm sitting like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. The mother of my unborn child got hit by a guy who was too busy playing with his cup holder, putting his coffee in the cup holder to pay attention to the road. This was before texting and talking on your cell phone was a very big deal. But this is what the asshole was doing. And he took the life of my child. And when I asked the mother, that's what I'm going to call it. When I asked the mother what she wanted to do a few days later after everything had kind of calmed down and she was feeling better, her exact words were, I want to try again, but I need some space. I need to kind of realize, like, this this happened. It's my fault. And I'm like, it was not your fault. And I had to keep telling her that over and over again. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. God damn, man. I was literally a record player. I could not stop saying it because she wouldn't let me. Every time she thought I would let her say it and believe it, no. So when finally we got the police report and everything, because she had, she had to go to court for this whole incident, and she found out what happened. The guy admitted that he wasn't paying attention to the road, and you know and all that stuff and he the guy who hit her was a father so it actually bothered him a lot and i when i say a lot i mean a lot to where he wanted to he wanted her to sue him like badly he wanted to suffer for it and she was like you're a moron you know i'm just saying like even i even i agree with her on that one that, that this was stupid it was an accident he was 100 percent at fault but money isn't going to bring back our child him going to jail isn't going to bring back our child. There's no justice here. He be him being taken away from his kids, especially considering the guy was the only one working between him and his wife. Nobody won in this case. It was all losses. So the court wound up taking away his license and a couple other things. But the mother, she, like I said, she had said she wanted to try again. And we did, we did try again for quite a while until one day she came up to me and said, Eddie, I don't, I don't think there's a reason why this hasn't happened since. And I think we need to give up. So we did. And a part of me always regrets not pushing just a little more just to, because deep down, even though yes, I love my nieces and they drive my nephew and they drive me wild and drive me crazy, they're not my kids. And my brother has said this to me multiple times. You never know just how much. Yeah, your kids will drive you crazy. They'll drive you wild. They'll drive you nuts. But they're your kids. And you don't know what it feels like until it happens. And I got to admit that I want that. I want to be a dad. I've wanted to be a dad since I was fucking 13 years old. I can openly state that and know it's the truth. 
Here was my opportunity and it was taken from me. And a part of me deep down still holds resentment um, that things never went the right way or went the way I wanted them to. But that's life, man. And I'm also a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Someday, maybe when I'm 50, I don't know, apparently, I may find somebody that wants to have kids with me and, you know, be badass. But the thing that drives me up the wall is that you've got so many young people now being stupid. Basically, the point of what I want to get at here is there's two things. One, if you're going to have unprotected sex, be prepared for the consequences of that. Just, just saying. STDs are horrible. Suck. Really. Nothing is worse than creating a life that you didn't want. So, wear condoms, you guys. And another thing, when you're driving, focus on the goddamn road. I'm just saying. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you Monday for another one. Until next time. Adios. Right. And as of this recording, eh, not everything is where I want it to be. Now I'll be explaining more about it next week and going forward, what this is, what it means for you guys, and uh, what it means for the future of my channel in some ways. So stay tuned for that. I would love to talk about it right now, but like I said, I'm still putting the final touches on certain things, and uh, yeah, a formal announcement will be made next Tuesday inside of Raider Strikes, and then next Wednesday inside of this series, I'll be going into more specific details as to what this announcement means going forward for me here on YouTube, and how it may...